Good morning, Eretz Israel. Good morning, everyone who wants to be in Israel. As I say goodbye, bid farewell to this beautiful, holy land of Israel. We spent one more day here with family in Tel Aviv, but we came for a bar mitzvah that took us from Yerushalayim to Tzvat. I don't know. I don't even know the words to describe the joy, the warmth, the love, the holiness, the uplifting, the pride. Being a Jew in Israel is like nowhere else in the world. And now I have to take all that Gaon Yaakov, that joy and pride of being a Jew and bring it back to Israel, bring it back to Toronto and share it with my community Chabad Markham and beyond. I'm going to share with you a story that my husband shared at the Bar Mitzvah, which is the reason we came to Israel. It was the Bar Mitzvah of my precious little nephew, whose name is Zalmi Raskin. His parents are Shluchim in Brooklyn Heights, Rabbi Ari and Sterni Raskin. They came with over 120 family and friends from their community to celebrate in their youngest son's bar mitzvah. So my husband was asked to say a few words in, hey, good morning, Francesca, Hilavan, I hear you're in Israel as well. <laughs> Everyone else in my community is sleeping, so I'm glad you're here to join me. Um, so my husband was asked to speak on Shabbat, and he shared this story to the bar mitzvah boy. My father-in-law, Rabbi Shmuel Platkin was celebrating his 13th birthday in Russia, in St. Petersburg. And he asks his father, Rabbi Vermela Platkin, whom my husband is named after, and he says to him, We're having a bar mitzvah. What's this broken table doing in our house? Can we just have something nice for the bar mitzvah? We're going to have a Liala Torah. Clearly the Jews weren't celebrating too much their Judaism during communist Russia. Remember this is uh, 70 years ago. And his father says to him, you know what's wrong with this table? You know what's right with this table? So this table was full of bruises and bumps and pucks and and, and scars from what seemed to be guns, bayonets. And he says, what is this table doing in our house? This is such a damaged table. And his father says to him, it is damaged, but let me tell you why. He says, one day, when you were a little boy, the Cossacks came storming into my home. My father was the Rav of the city. He was the chief rabbi of the city. And they demanded gold. And they came to me with a gun to my head. And they said, give us the gold. And I said to them, I'm a rabbi. And I'm a rabbi of a very poor congregation. This is a very poor city. We have no money. And they wouldn't believe him. And they pushed him around and they beat him. And then they took their rifle and they banged it on the table, screaming, give us the gold. And he kept reiterating, I promise you, there is no gold. And they wouldn't believe it. They wouldn't believe it. And they kept reinforcing and redemanding Give us your gold. We know you have it hidden here. But no matter what he wanted to give, there was nothing to give, right? So at that moment, they took the gun and they stuck it at his neck. And my husband Zayda remembered a pasuk from King David. And he said, and he quoted his 
King David and he said, even if there's a knife at your throat, you never give up because Hashem can help. And that Pasuk from the Tehillim just entered his mind and revived his heart. And as he thought those words of Tehillim, there were gunshots right outside. And the Bolsheviks had arrived. Bolsheviks weren't friends of the Jews, but at that moment, they saved my Zayda's life because those Kazakhs ran, ran for their life, and he was saved. He tells his son, Bar Mitzvah's son, he says, this table is a reminder that even when the last ounce of hope is gone, put up your eyes to Hashem and say, Hashem, I trust in you. You have the power to save anyone. And I believe it's the power of the bitachon that saves us. It's when we can't rely on a human being anymore we are putting our faith and trust in God, and God delivers. This is a story that my husband repeated at the Bar Mitzvah, and it made a profound impact on the Bar Mitzvah boy and everyone that was around. That next day, the whole family went up to Tzvat, to the tombstones and the graves of those that are buried in the cemetery. We call it Beit Chaim, right? The house of the living. And my father-in-law of 95 years old, shy two months, walked down the entire mountain of the Beit Chaim. Behind him were 120 people. My father-in-law is carrying his cane refused to be helped, walked down the rocky, I'm telling you, if anybody's ever been to Tzfat, you'll know what I mean. The, the cemetery there is built on a mountain slope, not like flat land like we have in Toronto, but it's a mountain slope. And he walks down with his cane. Behind him is a legion of children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Four generations walking down to find this tombstone of his Zayda of Ramella. And right now, as I close my eyes, the image in front of me is my father-in-law of almost 95, his sons and daughters, which includes my husband, the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren. And they were standing here saying to Helen, by this great Rabbi Evermola Platkin, Oliver Shalom, with a very strong message. They could put a knife, they could put a gun to your neck. They can threaten you with your bayonets and make those marks on your table. But when a Jew has faith, Hashem is at their side. Always, always, always and forever. And it's interesting because last week, I was told of a very, very similar story, a story of resilience, courage, hope, but on the other side of the world. For me, it was take, it took place in Poland. My Zayda, Rab Evram Eliyahu Galitsky, Rab Eliyahu, Moshe Elia Galitsky, what a great man. He was running from the Nazis. Nine of his siblings were murdered in Warsaw. And him and his brother ran. And they ran through the streets of Poland, trying to escape alone, maybe 15 and 16 years old. Nazis were after them. And at one point, two Nazis were literally right behind their back. Maizeda tripped and fell into a mud pie, into a ditch. And when he got up, he was head to toe 
in mud. Behind him were the Nazis with two guns. One was ready to shoot, and the other one said, Eh! Don't waste your bullet. Nothing's going to come from him. Remember those words. Nothing's going to come from him. My Zayda ran for his life. And of course, Baruch Hashem, through great miracles, he was granted a passport from Sugihara. He made it through Shanghai, eventually made it to New York, and then started his life as a shliach in Montreal. About a year before he passed away, he was sitting at a bar mitzvah of one of my cousins. Now, just to let you know, my Zayda has over 500 descendants. You could do the math. Eight children. Each one of them has between eight and 11 children. Each one of them has between seven and 13 children. And now they're having seven children. And that generation now is having many children. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, Hodil Hashem Kitov. We have, my Zayda has many, many descendants. So he's sitting at this bar mitzvah in America, next to the bar mitzvah boy and his children and grandchildren. The photographer standing there and he says, move in, move in, move in. This family is too big for my camera. My Zayda turns to one of my aunts and he says and those Nazis said nothing's gonna come from me my message today my message today my dear friends for those of you who are watching now for those who are going to join in Toronto later on when you wake up this morning as Jews we only have the absolute gift the absolute choice of hope, faith, courage, resilience, and pride. There are no other words to describe your life or my life. If we ever begin to feel that we are lesser than, or we have hopelessness, or we are feeling sad, think about your great-grandparents, how they survived. Every one of your grandparents has this story. And our job is to take their message, to hold on to their coattails, and to live with the same courage and resilience. And although the scenery is different, we are, thank God, not suffering now in Poland or in St. Petersburg. But we still have the Nefesh Bahamas, the Yetzirah. We still have anti-Semites out there that are trying their luck to bring us down. Don't let it penetrate. Don't let it become your anthem. Choose a hero, a tzaddik, a rebbe that you can connect with. And always remember, Am Yisrael Chai. Mashiach is here. We have to open our eyes and live it. And when Hashem sees that we are ready, we will er enter, finally, the era of Mashiach and let it happen now. I will not have to get onto that plane back to Canada. I'll be able to stay right here in Israel and watch the fulfillment of a prophecy. The Mashiach is coming now. The promise of the Rebbe gave us, Hine Hine Mashiach Ba. I want to wish you all, I don't know what you are doing up, Carmela, so early in the morning, <laughs> but I want to wish you all a great day. I'm on my way back to Toronto, back to my community, back to my shluchas. So sad to say goodbye. This was my last stop after spending the weekend, the Shabbat, in Yerushalayim, in Sfat. It was breathtaking. But it's going to keep me going every single day when I realize that Hashem is with me and with you. We have to never, ever forget that. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.